All right, guys, it is officially NFL Draft Week, and I couldn't be more excited for this draft to finally be here. We've done a ton of different mock drafts, a ton of different draft content, but we still have some things to go over. And in today's video, I wanted to break down the rest of the top 30 or top visits that the Green Bay Packers have conducted. We've done two other episodes going over the first section, then the second section. Now we have pretty much the last section of players. Now, this totals 26 total players so there's four visits that have either been not reported yet um, or won't be reported but we're going to go over every single one we know um, that's new as of right now also i will be going live for nights one and two of the nfl draft right here on this youtube channel i'll be starting at 7 30 eastern 30 minutes before the start of the draft on thursday evening then i'll be starting at 6 45 eastern on friday night for rounds two through three i'll put the links down in the description you can also find the live streams under the live tab on my channel they're already posted and you can click to be notified when they go up you could also go down click the subscribe button and turn on post notifications to also be notified when any new content goes up on this channel and of course when i start the live stream so definitely come out have some fun let's watch the draft together all right so without further ado let's dive down right into it so i'm going to quickly recap some of the players the packers have met with in this pre-draft process that we've already made videos on so if you want to check those out you can go back on my channel it's the videos that are titled every prospect the Packers have met with thus far. So I've made two of those so far, and the first one was for players Zach Zinner, guard out of Michigan, Jerrion Jones, cornerback from FSU, Jaquan Shepard, cornerback from Maryland, Edron Cooper, linebacker, Texas A&M, Trevin Wallace, linebacker, Kentucky, Michael Hall, defensive lineman from Ohio State, Christian Boyd, defensive tackle from Northern Iowa, and Tyler Guyton, tackle from Oklahoma. That was in the first video, and then in the second video, it included Katan Oladapo, safety from Oregon State, Omar Brown, safety slash knuckle corner from Nebraska, Tyron Hopper, linebacker from Missouri, Amarius Mims, tackle from Georgia, Chris Edmonds, safety from Arizona State, and Ray Davis, running back from Kentucky. So in this video, we have even more prospects to go over. We have another 12 to go over, which again equals 26, not 30. And of course, they do have 30 visits that they can use. It seems like right now, four of them haven't been reported and the Packers can't do any more top 30 visits. All of them have been concluded or they just only use 26 of them. So let's start this thing off and bring up the first six. And at the top of the list is Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback out of Alabama. Bringing up his profile, we've talked about Kool-Aid McKinstry a ton. I've been mocking him to the Green Bay Packers in the last few mock drafts, including some trade ups back into the first round or back into the early in the second round to grab Kool-Aid McKinstry. But he could also be very well be the pick at pick 25 for the Green Bay Packers. Six, 195 pounds, um, starting cornerback from Alabama. Last year had an 88.8 overall grade. 87.8 coverage grade, run defense grade, 83.0. One of the better cornerbacks coming out of this class. I mean, when you look at his RAS, not the greatest athletic profile when you, in terms of what the Packers usually like. You know, 5'11", 199 pounds, 4'47", 40 time, not a great vertical at 34.5 broad jumps okay and didn't test in agility so in terms of what the Packers usually like at that athletic profile Kool-Aid isn't usually what they go for but at the same time in the second round last year Jaden Reed wasn't what they usually went for so if the Packers really like a player which I think they do with Kool-Aid McKinstry they very well still could select him I think he fits into this defense perfectly what the Packers want to run more physical aggressive press man style type of cornerbacks and that is Cooley McKinstry. He's one of my top favorite picks, at least for what I think the Packers will do this coming Thursday. Next on this list, we have wide receiver Jermaine Burton, also from Alabama, and actually the only wide receiver the Packers use a top 30 visit on. As we see here last year, 79.7 grade. He had 39 receptions for 798 yards and eight touchdowns in 13 games, an 82.0 receiving grade, 2.75 yards per route run, contested catch rate of 56.3. And we see he's played mainly wide, but last year he did play some slot. I've barely looked at wide receivers thus far in this draft because not that I don't think the Packers will end up drafting one. I think they will at least maybe get one in this draft. I'd be shocked for them to go say someone like Jermaine Burton with one of their second round picks. That's kind of where he falls right around that second to third round range. So I'd be really shocked if the Packers went and selected Jermaine Burton there. But say if this guy falls to the third round and it's like, okay, we have him ranked in the second and he's sitting there in the third. Yeah, sure. The Packers could go ahead and select someone like Jermaine Burton. But when you take a look at his RAS, he is, he is a good athlete, a 9.09. Um, six foot, 196 pounds. He ran a 4.4540, and he has elite explosion with a 38.5 vertical and a 11 foot one broad jump. 
Next on this list is Edge Austin Booker from Kansas, and he's a player that just feels like a Packers pick, say, in like the third to fourth round, and it makes sense. You know, last year, an 82.2 overall grade, nine sacks. The year before that, uh, didn't play much, didn't have a sack. So really only one year of production, one year of starting. So that that's definitely a concern there and probably why he'll be like a third to fourth round pick, in my opinion. But he's 6'6", 245 pounds, and is still 21 years old. So there's a lot to like about Austin Booker when you look at his RAS pro Profile. Not the greatest athlete, but a little bit above average. So that actually had him listed as 6'6". He's actually 6'4 and a half, we'll call it. Um, 240 pounds, so a little light for the 6'4 frame for sure. Um, 7.02 RAS with a 4.7940. Um, explosion grade's good. Agility grade's good. Nothing crazy jumps off the board in terms of Austin Booker. But I think you're definitely buying into the potential and the fact that he's only 21 years old. You know, he had a pass rush grade last year of an 80.6. Good run defense grade. Pass Pass rush win rate of 14.8% and a great run stop rate of 10.2%. The Packers are likely going to add an edge. They very well could in the early rounds, right? We know what we have with Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith. Hopefully Lucas Van Ness takes a, a step in his sophomore year, which I, I believe he will. You also have Kingsley and Igbari coming from a torn NCL. Probably won't be ready until November at the earliest. And you have Brenton Cox Jr. But I still think the Packers always like to add talent and, and depth into that edge room. And Austin Book could definitely be an option, say, in the third to fourth round. Next on this list, we have Akeem Dent, safety from Florida State. Uh, he's not on PFF, so right now I'm on NFL Draft Buzz to show you his uh, profile here. 5'11", 191 pounds. Taking a look at his RAS profile, a pretty solid athlete, 8.67 RAS. Um, 5'11", almost six foot, 203 pounds, 16 bench reps, um, elite speed for a safety. You know, a lot of safeties nowadays, you'll see the RES and they're running four sixes and whatnot. So to see four, four, five speed here from a safety, that's probably why he's intriguing. But Akeem Dent, likely a late round to undrafted free agent type of player. The Packers meet with these guys a lot because it allows you to get them into the building, kind of create that rapport with them to when they go undrafted. Hey, I want to sign with Green Bay. I met with him. I liked it there. I'm going to sign with Green Bay. And the Packers do an excellent job at this. And I think Akeem Dent, um, one of those players that, you know, maybe they target in the seventh round. They have some picks there. Or if he falls undrafted, a guy that they could definitely bring in um, to build up that 90-man roster. You see he had good agility grade, including a great three coach. Uh, good explosion, not great vertical, but a good broad jump here. Next on this list, we have Mason Smith, defensive lineman from LSU. Last year, he played in 12 games and had three sacks, um, a 65.3 rating. I think Mason Smith is definitely a project type of player. You know, if you bring into the mid to late rounds and he could develop into something great. 76.5 pass rush grade, not good against the run, though. 55.6, great pass rush win rate at 9.5%, but run stop rate very low at 3.5%. 5%. Looking at his size and his athletic profile, he is a great athlete for a defensive tackle, 8.46, 6'5", 306 pounds, but only 21 bench reps, so you can kind of see why not the strongest guy, not really of a mover or run stop or more of a get-after-the-passer type of guy. Um, good speed, a 5.0140, good agility, nothing crazy there, and good explosion. Again, nothing crazy with a 31-inch vertical and a 9-foot broad jump. Looking at his description here, it says, Smith is a physically gifted prospect but one who will need to develop. He has to speed up his play, both in recognition and movements, to be more than a rotational player with plus size. So at 6'5", 306 pounds, you kind of expect him to be more of a run stopper, and he's simply not. Um, he tore his ACL in 2022, it says here as well, so that's something to monitor there. To me, Smith is a fourth to fifth round prospect, but I like a lot of the other defensive tackles over him. Next on this list, we have Giovanni Manu, offensive tackle slash guard from British Columbia. Um, I made up his RAS here. Uh, based on what the information I could find on his testing at his pro day, um, which concluded to an unofficial 9.36 RS, so a great athlete. I think he's a former basketball player as well. 6'7", 352 pounds, so has a ton of size there, elite size grade, 23 bench reps, super fast for that size as well, 5.06, so good RAS on the 40-yard dash, 20-yard and 10-yard split, not bad. Uh, poor on the shuttle, but great vertical at 9.67. Um, I found a little article on Giovanni Manu here. A native of Tonga, Manu played in 39 games over six seasons, red shirt in 2018, 2020 season canceled. He started 33 games at left tackle and six at left guard. Manu was second team all Canadian pick in both 22 and 2023 and he's 23 years old a potential day three pick or priority free agent Manu is likely viewed as a developmental prospect who has a physical size and athleticism to play at the NFL level this feels like a lot of the 
um, tackles the Packers have brought in after the draft as undrafted free agents. You know, Caleb Jones, Josh Nyman, just the physical size and athleticism and a project to tackle. A guy you want to stash on your roster that eventually could become, you know, something significant like a Josh Nyman. So definitely be on the lookout for Manu after the draft is over for the Packers to bring him in as an undrafted free agent. Before we dive into the final six players the Packers have met with, I want to give a shout out to our channel sponsor, BetUS. If you're looking for a new online sports book, you guys definitely need to check out BetUS. They're currently offering a 125% deposit match up to $2,500 on your first three deposits. Basically what that means, if you were to put in $500, you'd then have $1,250 to play with. They have 24-7 customer service and 24-hour payouts. Click the link in the top of the description to receive your bonus. And on BetUS, there's a ton of different draft props you could bet on, such as certain players to be drafted to certain teams or what pick they'll go by. I'm interested right now in this J.J. McCarthy to be selected by which team in the upcoming draft. Right now, the Vikings are leading at plus 120. The Giants are second. The Patriots are third. The Commanders are fourth at plus 650. And this has been lowering and lowering, being more in favor of it um, in the last couple of days. Um, a lot of people do think that J.J. McCarthy could go at number two to the Washington Commanders, and that's at plus 650. So I'm going to throw a little bit of money on that. I'm going to put a $25 bet on that. That would win $162.50. So I'm going to go ahead and place that bet. You guys can tail my bet or bet on plenty of other different things on the NFL draft on BetUS. Again, the link is down in the description if you guys want to check it out. All right, so now for the final six players the Packers have met with in this pre-draft process. Next on this list is Donovan. Jennings offensive lineman from USF and we see here his overall grade last year 72.8 grade he allowed two sacks the year before that in four games 63.6 Last year, he included an 82.0 pass block grade, a run block grade of 64.8. We see the last three seasons all at left tackle, 809 snaps last year, uh, 216 in 2022, and then another 813 snaps in 2021. Taking a look at his profile here, an 8.93, so a nice um, athletic tackle. I see him more as a guard. He's 6'4", 323 pounds, very strong, 28 bench reps, 33-inch arms. I see him transitioning into guard at the NFL level, and it's probably what the Packers brought him in for to see, like, hey, you know, can this guy be a guard for us, right? And and, and a lot of the times with these visits, it's if they have potential injury concerns like he did in 2022 to kind of clear that up as well. Um, great speed grade, 5.02 40-yard dash, 28-inch uh, vertical, so he didn't qualify for an explosion grade, and he had a good agility grade with a great three-cone, which the Packers really like as well when they draft linemen that three cone means a lot for the Green Bay Packers so Donovan Jennings here another player that could likely be a seventh round pick or an undrafted free agent he's 24 and a half years old so he's almost already 25 years old so he'll likely if at anything at most be like a seventh round pick but again just another lineman that has versatility that the Packers could definitely bring in as an undrafted free agent then we have Marshawn Neeland an edge from Western Michigan someone that's been very intriguing to me and I've thought about the Packers selecting him at one of their second round draft picks and I could definitely see that happening um, ton of production last year an 89.7 overall grade last year with six total sacks and 28 hurries he had an 84.7 pass rush grade 83.4 runs run defense grade pass rush win rate of 17.3 percent and a really great run stop rate of 11.0 percent looking at his athletic profile of course, he's an athlete, and he checks off most boxes about what the Packers like at edge. Yes, they usually like him a little taller. He's 6'3", uh, but he has the weight, 267 pounds, and I, I do believe uh, the Packers kind of want to go that route. They want to add another one of these guys in that 260 to 270 range, right? Um, good speed, not great, 475, but that's still good at 267 pounds, right? Great explosion, vertical and broad jump, both great. Packers love that, and great agility. I mean, he's some of the best shuttle and three-cone grades out of all edges, and at that size, that's very, very impressive. His description here says overall his competition wasn't the best, but he absolutely dominated it, especially in 2023. NFL teams will love his passion for physicality. He has the body, explosiveness, and mentality of an NFL contributor. And I definitely see Neyland going anywhere in the second round. It could even be early second. So if he's sitting there at 41 or 58 or anywhere in between, uh, definitely looks like a player that the Packers could definitely have their eyes on. Next, we have quarterback Gavin Hardison, the only quarterback on this list. And good 
Buda Kuhn's mentioned he wants to bring another quarterback into the room. So I, I definitely think the Packers could draft one late or bring in a couple undrafted free agents. And it looks like Hardison likely will be an undrafted free agent, maybe at max a seventh round pick. I found this article on him because he's not on PFF. Hardison, a Juco transfer, started 35 games over five seasons at UTEP, completed 570 of 1,061 passes for 7,963 yards, 40 touchdowns, and 33 interceptions while also running for three touchdowns. Hardison, who turns 24 in May, needed surgery to repair the UCL ligament and missed the final seven games of the 2023 season. Now, he's not the greatest athlete, a 4.86 RAS, very undersized quarterback, you know, almost 6'2", 6'1", 206 pounds, uh, not fast by any means, a 4'8'2", poor explosion, good agility grade, definitely an undrafted guy that the Packers may be looking at to bring into the uh, building to, you know, round out their 90-man roster. Then we have Del Pettis from Troy, uh, probably a seventh round undrafted guy as well. A pretty undersized safety, 5'10.6". We'll give him the benefit of the doubt and round that up to 5'11", 200 pounds, but does have some good speed, 4'5'40", okay explosion, and an okay agility grade. So the Packers looking at a lot of defensive backs and players in general that are potentially going to be undrafted free agents, as we mentioned before. Then we have Karan Amagaji, tackle from Yale, and he's someone that intrigues me a lot, and I feel like uh, will be one of the Packers picks at either 41 or 58. I think he could fall to 58 due to the limited testing and, of course, the quad injury that ended his season in 2023. But I really like the thought of Karan Amagaji as an offensive lineman in the Packers draft because he has versatility. You know, 89.5 grade in the four games last season, didn't allow a sack. The year before that, played in 10 games, didn't allow a sack. The year before that, played in 10 games, only allowed one sack. And again, this is limited. It's only in four games last year, but a good run block, good pass block. And like I said, versatility. Left tackle the last two seasons. And in 2021, he played all of his snaps at left guard. So he has versatility there. And we look at his size. You know, he's 6'5", 318 pounds. Doesn't have an RAS because he didn't really test much. So again, we can't really qualify for that. Still 22 years old. Yes, plays at less competition, but I really like the prospect of Karan Amagaji, and I feel like he is going to be one of the linemen the Packers draft in this upcoming draft. The final player on this list is safety Jalen Carlisle from Missouri. We see his athletic profile here in 8.26, great size. And he has one of the longest wingspans for all safeties in this upcoming class. Elite size, should I say. Um, 6'2", almost 6'3", 227 pounds, and 20 bench reps. This dude is an aggressive style type of safety. When I started doing some research on him because of this video, before this video, man, this guy can hit. And I think he's going to be a very underrated type of safety. A guy that maybe you sneak into the seventh round, get this guy in the seventh round, or an undrafted guy. And a guy that's, that can make a 53-man roster. I fully believe that. Not only could he be a potential safety in the future, but a special teamer. Like a core, core special teamer. We see here also great speed. That 4-5 speed with that size, that's something that NFL teams are obviously taking a look at here. Okay explosion, not great vertical, a good broad, poor agility in terms of shuttle, but a decent three cone. Jalen Carlisle is still only 22 years old, and he's right around like 270 in terms of the consensus board, like where he falls. So, you know, very well could be in the back end of that seventh round if a team wants to, you know, pretty much assure that he's going to be on their roster. And I think this could be one of the players that the Packers target in the back end of their seventh round. To wrap things up, I quickly wanted to go over the positions the Packers have met with and how many of them, right? Because this means something. So a lot of the Packers' previous draft picks in the past few seasons, they've met with. More specific specifically the mid to late round guys, and of course, undrafted free agents as well. But more importantly, you have to also look at what type of positions the Packers are, are visiting with. So the Packers oh. met with five safeties in this upcoming class uh, in terms of their top 30 visits. So Packers clearly eyeing some safeties in this draft class, and it is a pretty weak class in my opinion, but I think the Packers could end up drafting one or two safeties and then bringing in also one or two undrafted. They met with four different tackles. It's very clear the Packers want to add some offensive line talent um, and depth. They just signed Andre Dillard this last week, and I think they're going to add like two to three offensive linemen, some versatile guys in this upcoming class. Inside linebacker, they met with three. We know the Packers need depth there. They need talent there. Of course, switching to a 4-3 and having more off-ball linebackers. Def Defensive linemen, they also met with three. I think they just want to add more versatile guys into that room. You know, again, switching to a 4-3, adding more guys that can maybe both play defensive tackle, play defensive end, like a Colby Wooden can, right? Then we have cornerback. They visited with three. I think cornerback could be their first overall pick. 
in this upcoming draft at pick 25 or if they trade down or trade up I really do think it could be cornerback interior offensive lineman they met with too I don't put too much weight on this because the Packers love guys that can play both positions right like I have Donovan Jennings listed interior here but he could play some tackle a lot of these guys that they visit with like Karan Amagaji can play guard can play tackle so in terms of offensive linemen they met with six so it's very clear they're going to bring in some offensive linemen in this draft and also after the draft as undrafted free agents edge they met with two again I think the Packers do draft an edge it's just a matter of where uh certain players fall and if the value is there running back they met with one I know a lot of people are valuing running back very high and saying hey the Packers need to go after someone like Jonathan Brooks or Jalen Wright in the third round um while I, I get that they still you know have Josh Jacobs they have AJ Dillon on the roster and 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 yes Josh Jacobs 26 years old will probably just see like two to three years of him so getting another guy on the roster would be nice but I don't know if the Packers necessarily have to spend a third or fourth round pick on a guy when there's a ton of talent in the in the later rounds at running back every single year and you can even get guys that are undrafted that can come into the building and, and be a quality type of running back right wide receiver they met with one already talked about that a bit when we talked about Jermaine Burton I, I they'll probably draft one just because they always do like they tend to always draft at least one wide receiver um, then quarterback they also met with one it was uh, Gavin Hardison from UTEP and I know they've met with other quarterbacks that aren't top 30 visits so Packers likely going to bring in a quarterback whether that's in the later rounds or multiple undrafted free agents but that does it for all the top 30 visits even though it's only 26 again there's four that are unreported or the Packers simply didn't you know, conclude. So um, if I get updates on that, I'll put it down in the comments, say when I'm editing this video, if more come out. But, uh, you know, I've been letting this sit for a little while, but I wanted to get this video out considering it is draft week. And I wanted to make a final video going over all the visits, the top 30 visits the Packers have had. Let me know in the comments below out of all these 26 visits, uh, which one would you want the most to be drafted by the Green Bay Packers uh, this coming weekend? But I appreciate you guys coming by to the video. If you can, please leave a like down below. It supports the channel a ton, but I'll catch you on the next one. And as always, Go Pack Go.